Once a lad named John was left alone in the world with only a cat for company. True, it was a very interesting cat that always walked around wearing leather boots. But John was unhappy. What good is a cat, especially in those awful boots? You don't like my boots, huh? No, I... <gasps> you talked! A talking cat! Sure! But why didn't... I mean, whoever... Sit ever... down, John. I'll tell you all about it. When I was just a teeny-weeny kitty, everyone told me that I looked so pretty. They said beautiful eyes, they said lovely fur, but all I could answer was meow or purr. My coat was black, my eyes, of course, were yellow. People always said, what a charming fellow. I wanted to thank them, but I didn't know how. For all I could answer was purr or meow. Then one fine day, as I was lying sleeping, a great idea into my head came creeping. A pussy cat that could learn to say meow, could say just me by leaving off the ow. So I said me, 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 me. And as you plainly can see, from me to he to she to we was just as simple as it could be. I practiced daily for a week, and that is how I learned to speak. Then I thought that I would try slipping off from me to my. From me to my to sky to why was just as easy as eating pie. I practiced daily for a week, and that is how I learned to speak. Soon I was no longer a beginner, and someone asked, How would you like some dinner? If I wanted to answer, I could say, yes, sir, instead of replying, just meow. The way you say it, puss, it sounds easy. Uh, there's nothing to it. Now, John, I want you to stop worrying. I'm going to make you a prince. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. How could I be a prince? You have to be born a prince. Your father must be a king. Why, I'm just an ordinary fellow. My father worked for a living. They'd see in a minute that I was a fake. Oh, nonsense. Dress like a prince, act like a prince, and you are a prince. Why, it's as easy as a cat's talking. Just leave everything to me. Very well. What can I lose? That afternoon, Puss put a sack over his shoulder and set out to see the king. On the way, he found three things. A broken wheel with its spokes all sticking out, a baby's diaper, an old alarm clock without hands. Puss put them in his sack, and just as he reached the king's palace... Hear ye, hear ye! The man who gives the king the finest gift can marry his beautiful daughter, the princess! Hear ye! Oh, if John marries the princess, he will be a prince. So Puss entered the king's court, just as the richest prince in the land was offering his gift. I am the prince of Snickersnee, with a gift as great as a gift can be. A golden crown for your majesty. Oh, a very cute little crown. Well, oh, thank you very much. Puss took the broken wheel from his sack. Your Majesty, a gift from my master, the Prince of Chiselwit. Uh, that's John. B but what is it? It looks like a, a, a broken wheel. Oh, no, no. The Prince of Snickersnee. 
has given your majesty a crown. The prince of Chiselwit gives you a crown rack. Oh, goody, goody! It's exactly what I've always wanted, a very extra special thing, for it's useful and quite pleasant, and it's just the kind of present that is fit for a king. But Snickersnee was not beaten yet. I'm the richest prince in this country, and here is a present to you from me. A silver sword for your majesty. Mm, ouch, oh, sharp, isn't it? Puss reached in and took the diaper from his sack. Your majesty, the prince of Snickersley has given you a sword. The prince of Chiselwit gives you a sword wiper. Whee! It's exactly what I've always wanted, a very extra special thing, for it's useful and quite pleasant, and it's just the kind of present that is fit for a king. But Snickersnee was not beaten yet. I'll fix that cat right now, you'll see, for this present is the best of the three, a pillow of silk for your majesty. Ah, then I'll sleep and sleep. Puss held out the broken alarm clock. Your Majesty, the Prince of Snickersnee has given you a pillow of silk. The Prince of Chiselwit gives you this gorgeous alarm clock. Oh, but everyone knows a king can sleep as late as he pleases. What, what use have I for an alarm clock? That's just it, Your Majesty. This alarm clock doesn't work. Oh, wonderful! Oh, boy! <laughs> it's exactly what I've always wanted, a very extra special thing, for it's useful and quite pleasant, and it's just the kind of present that is fit for a king. Hear ye, hear ye! The king now has all his gifts, and the man who will marry the princess... Uh-oh! ...will be announced right after lunch. As soon as lunch was over, everyone gathered in the court to hear who would marry the princess. Hear ye, hear ye, the man who has given the king the finest gift, the man who will marry the beautiful princess, is the Prince of Chiselwit! <laughs> Your Majesty, uh, when will he be married? Well, why wait? Let's say uh, tomorrow, huh? Uh, then we must have the wedding right after breakfast at the uh, little lake on the palace grounds, huh? Yeah, yes, a very good idea. It'll be a beautiful wedding, and everyone is invited. The king has picked a prince who's fit. Hooray, hooray, this happy day. Lord Chiswick, is it? Puss hurried home and told John the wonderful news. I'm really going to be a prince? I can hardly believe it. It's true, though. Puss, I take back all the nasty things I said about your boots. On you, those boots look elegant. Oh, a camel in a cowboy suit looks awful. And suspenders on a snake are just as bad. And the bear who wears a beret, though he tries to look quite merry, makes himself look only very, very sad. Now the luscious seems so silly on a gold dish, and snails are such a sorry sight in And llamas in pajamas look dumb even to their mamas. But boots look nice on pussy cats. Boots look very nice on pussy cats. Oh, a fever shouldn't bother with a bathrobe. And a raincoat on a reindeer isn't right. And a steel in bedroom slippers 
So he fits them on his slippers and he zips them up with zippers to look upright. Now a spider in a sweater is no better. Hippopotami look horrible in her. And a sparrow in a snowsuit looks much worse than one in no suit. But boots look nice on pussycat. Boots look very nice on pussycat. Thanks, John. Now, oh, let's get ready for the wedding. But I can't marry the princess in these old clothes. Why, they'd laugh at me. Ah, oh, no, John. Let me take care of that. The next morning, very early, Puss took John to the little lake on the palace ground. And while everyone was at breakfast... All right, John, take off your clothes and slip into the water. What? What? Quick, quick, do as I say. While John was in the water, Puss took his old ragged clothes and buried them. And just as he finished... The king, the princess, and all the people of the court came toward the lake for the wedding. Help! Help! Someone has stolen my master, the prince of Chiselwick. Oh! Oh, dear, that's terrible. And right here on the palace grounds. <laughs> Never mind, I'll send for new clothes right away. So one of the king's men ran to the palace and brought a suit of the finest silk, embroidered in gold and silver. John put it on. And there he stood, looking exactly like a prince. Your Majesty, I have the honor to present my master, the Prince of Chiselwit. Oh, Daddy, he's very handsome. And you, my princess, are very beautiful. Oh, Daddy, I think I'm falling in love. Me too. My best friend isn't here. Well, where is he? Here he comes. John, oh, my dearest friend, I couldn't come to your wedding without a present, and I have here in my sack a wonderful gift for you, the present I like best in all the world. Slowly, Puss opened the sack, and out jumped a mouse. Yeah! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, good gracious. Carry on! And since he is a prince, we'll sing hooray for John. 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 H